can down. You can see the water like feeding down. It's like using it as a water slide. Miss, do you have frogs legs? Why, yes. Ready, set, go. go. I felt it, I felt it, I felt it! Mice to hear it. That's finished for taste good. It's really good. Funding for Zoom is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future, and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people, the Arthur Vining Davis Foundation. The Weezy Foundation, the Tucker Gosnell Family Foundation, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Hey! Hi, we're the Granger School, right here in Feeding Hills, Massachusetts. without you. Maggie W. of Sugarland, Texas sent us this next game called Daddy Penguin. Here's how you play. The first players on each team put a ball between their feet. Then they have to waddle to the end of the course and back, kind of like a penguin. So kind of like that. It's kind of hot. If the ball drops in their feet, they have to pick it up, put it back between their feet, and keep on going. Want to know why Maggie calls it Daddy Penguin? We found out that some species of male penguins take care of their penguin eggs. They balance them on their feet between their feathers to keep them warm. Okay, so that's your ball, and that's your ball. Okay, penguins, on your mark. Get set. Go. Come on, Caroline! Woo! Caroline, Caroline, she's coming back! Wow, that's a good game! They're in a tie! Caroline! Woo! Caroline, Caroline! Oh, you're in! Pass the ball! 
Welcome to Cafe Zoo. Today I'm going to share with you a special recipe that's been handed down from my great-grandmother to my mother. This recipe originates in Finland, where my great-grandmother was born. It's called Bunagakwa. That's Finnish for pancake. In Finland, it's traditional to serve this treat when you have company for a special event or just sometimes for breakfast. Here's what you'll need to make it. One teaspoon salt, three tablespoons sugar, three cups milk, one stick of unsalted butter, three eggs, three-fourths cup flour. It's better if you sift the flour, which means make it free of clumps. I already have some that sifted. All right, here's what you do. Beat your three eggs in a bowl. I already have some that's eaten. Then mix in your salt, your sugar, and your milk. Okay. It's really cool. Whoop. So now I'm going to it. It's really cool, the color. It has like white with yellow stripes. Oh, I can feel where the sugar is. Little by little, add the flour. Stir it. Ooh, it's really like it's getting hotter to stir. Hi. Still pretty clumpy. There's a lot of big pieces of flour. It's weird. Bonagakwa is spelled with a P, but it sounds like it's a B, so it's kind of crazy. Now you need to melt the butter. I already melted the butter in the microwave. I'm going to use these mitts because the butter's going to be hot. There we go. There we go. Close the I stirred the butter every 30 seconds until it was melted. I also put a piece of wax paper over the top of the dish so that the butter didn't splatter when it was in the microwave. Oh, i got to put the, the mitts back on some time. Okay, take this off. Now, add your melted butter into the mixture. Oh, it smells really good. It smells like popcorn butter. The butter's getting on my mitts. Here we go. I'm going to mix it. Oh, now it really looks cool. The butter made it a lot more colorful. That's good. Pour it into a greased 9 by 13 inch pan. I already have one that's greased with butter. There we go. All the butter and all the pickles. Bake for about 20 minutes in an oven that has been preheated to 450 degrees. Wavy. It's hard to carry. You've got to be careful. There we go. This is what makes this pancake different from the ones you might be used to. It's baked in an oven, not fried in a pan. Once your pancake is cooked and cooled, you can serve it with different toppings, like maple syrup, jelly, honey, or powdered sugar. Cut it into squares to serve. I already have one that's made. Meister Hewe. That's Finnish for taste good. Get some powdered sugar. Mm, it's really good. Here's a simple recipe. You've got to say the Hewe. Alicia C. of Sheffield, Alabama, sent us this challenge. 
The only material we can use besides our cells and the cups is string. Whichever team, either Courtney and me, or Xingying and Estuardo, is the first to get the water from this cup to the line of this cup is the winner. Ready, guys? Yep. All right. So, all right. How could we do this? We could use, like, we have to pour the water somehow without physically moving the pipe. But if we somehow, like, cut a hole at the top and we knotted it, and we knotted it to that, and we lift it this, exactly to the above, and we just pour it. All right, let's try it. Adhesion is the ability of molecules to stick together. Yeah. So, so how could we get the water to stick to this? Well, since molecules want to stick it together, maybe we should soak it and then try what we were thinking of before. So if we tie this here, oh, we still have to make sure that the string is two feet long. Will that stick? No, it's, it's not. It doesn't look like it's sliding, is it? I, I would think it would just drain right in. Like... Oh, ooh. Little. A little higher. Drops. Go, go, little drops. Uh -huh. oh, I, that did I, don't, not work. I don't think that's gonna work. I think you need it higher so that it'll slide down faster. Oh. Ooh, these aren't making it into the cup. Oh, is your hand in the way? I think so. Um, just let it. Um, oh, how can we do it without getting your hand in the way, though? Perfect. It goes all the way fancy. See how it stops here because then it started going level. If, if we put this cup down, all the way down, so this whole thing is straight, and we did the exact same thing, it probably works, so let's see. No. Tilt the cup. Sounds like it. Yeah. Alright. Ooh, we've got some coming. Ooh, I feel it. I can feel it. Keep on pulling. That's a good speed. Yay. <gasps> it's working! Oh my gosh, it's working! <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> Don't go any faster. Okay, <laughs> okay. Is, is it coming? Yeah, it does it when you go really slow like that. You can see the water. Like, you can see the water like speeding down. It's like repelling out. It's not even like on. It's just going right past. It's like using it as a water slide. Yeah, I know. That's really cool. <laughs> Just keep, just keep letting it flow. Yeah. Want to try to fill the whole cup? Actually, might not be a bad idea. That's really cool. We're almost there. We're done? Yeah, I think we're done. Oh, wow. Uh, I think we got it. <laughs> we definitely have more. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> you guys want to come with me see ours? Oh, sure. Okay, here's what we did. We cut a hole on both sides, and then we put the string through both, and then put knots on both sides. And then we, like, tilted it up so it was on a diagonal, and then we slowly, kind of really slowly poured a cup. And so we thought of, like, adhesion, you know, how it can stick to different molecules. And so this way I keep adhesive to the water, so... When you tied the knots, was the string um, dry or was it wet? Well, it was dry at first, but it didn't work as well. So we wet it. So we kind of stuck it in the thing of water. Oh. Here's the science group on why this works. Water molecules have a strong attraction to other water molecules. This means that they stick together really well. This is called cohesion. Water can also stick to other materials, like string. This is called adhesion. That is why when we pour the water down the string, it stuck to the water molecules on the string and the string. You can see this in action next time you're taking a shower. Stick out your arm and all the water that falls on your hand will go under your hand and drip down your arm. This is because the water is sticking to your arm and to the other water. Here's another cool thing you can do with water and strength. Using two strings instead of one, you can make a water bridge. Okay, this is a little, like, going. Oh, oh, that is so oh, cool. Wow, it's like a waterfall almost. It's going, Definitely. it's going straight down. It's like 
Wow. And it goes real fast, too. Yeah, it definitely goes faster. You can, you can also so, sort of see, like, little stripes. Oh, wow. that's neat. Yeah. Keep watching, because later in the show, we're going to have a water string race. I'm Dante. I'm 13 years old. I live in Naval Station, Mayport, in Jacksonville, Florida. My father is a first-class petty officer in the Navy. He's been away for six months in the Arabian Sea off the coast of Afghanistan. Sometimes I worry about my father because he's in a dangerous place and I'm scared he'll get hurt. I miss my dad because when he's here, he plays basketball with me, he plays video games, and he takes my brother and I fishing. My mom, my brother, Quanti, and I live on the base. I like living on base because everything I like to do fun is right here. We have our own youth center. My brother, Quanti, and I come here to play games. We even have our own pizza place. The base even has its own beach. My father's coming home to mom, and I'm so anxious to see him because I haven't seen him in a long time. Okay, Dad, we're ready for you. When my dad first sees me, I wonder if he's going to think I've grown. The name of my father's ship is the USS Wade City, which protects the JFK aircraft carrier. Belongings, which things would you bring? Well, I think that I would bring what would be dogs, um, a bed, and pillows. I will bring my pets, my family, my bed, and money. So money, clothes, and a trampoline. I would bring my cat my binoculars, and eight pairs of clothes. <laughs> Sir, why are you staring at that orange juice carton? Sir? Sir, you're being really weird, sir. <laughs> Why'd you do that? Why are you staring at the orange juice carton? Because it said concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia K. of Seattle, Washington, sent us a review of the book called My Father's Dragon by Ruth Stiles Gannett. Here's what Olivia wrote. The book starts when a boy named Elmer meets an alley cat. The cat tells him about a baby dragon who needs help. Elmer decides to travel to the island where the dragon is trapped and helps him escape. Elmer takes a backpack full of stuff, like chewing gum and hair ribbons, to help him on his journey. He uses these things to trick the animals who won't let the dragon go. There are two other books in this series, and I really like them all. They are called Elmer and the Dragon and The Dragons of Blue Land. You will really enjoy reading these books. You know, you could have a lot of fun reading to a younger brother or sister. I share stories with my younger brother all the time. Give it a try. <laughs> We volunteered by raising money for a homeless shelter and an animal shelter. 
We did this by holding a swimathon at our school and asking people to pledge money for every lap that we swam. At first, we thought it would just be the two of us. But then, the whole Orca swim team got involved, and together, we were able to raise $1,400. Do you volunteer in your community? If you do, you're already a member of the Zoom team. We want to hear all about it. Send your story, along with any photos or videos, to this address. Remember, the little things you do can sometimes make a big difference. Zoom is And join the Zoom team! know how to use string to transfer water, we're going to have a race to see who can get their water from this side of the room all the way to this side. The first team to get their hand back is the winner. Each team gets to choose the type of string they want. To help us make our decision, we get to experiment with different types of string for a while. Want to try the baby? Yeah, definitely. Might be hard to soak. That's it. Whoa. Wow, it's, it's like very, wet. it's not all. Okay. No way. That one's pretty good. Let's put it on the maybe list. Maybe list. How's that working? It's working good too. The dental floss. Uh, that was, a, that was a lot though. Ooh, actually, that one works really well. Okay. Yeah, this one. This one really works. This is yeah. gonna be our pick. Is Shingy in the next door? Are you guys ready to race? Yep, yep. totally. All right. Okay, let's do it. Basically, we chose our string because we tried it out and it absorbed a lot of water out of our cup. And also, it's not twisted, it's not braided, it's just, it's very smooth, basically, so the water can just skim down. The reason we chose ours is, well, in our opinion, it ran the fastest and it had a lot of water running through it. And I think the spirals and the braidedness helped us, just, and it went real down, so it was like the opposite for us. Okay, you guys, let's start. All right. Alright, ring it out a little bit. Alright, so I can find me. Hey guys, Courtney, let's go to the end. You got it? Okay. You guys ready now? I was ready. <laughs> so cool. Who's gonna say when? I, I will, I guess. Keep, keep your pointer down until she says go. Hold the handle. Pull it, make it straight. Okay, you guys, get your water ready. Okay. Alright. Ready, set, go. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not feeling anything. I know, make sure you actually get it down. Mike, are you? It's not going. It's not going. What oh, is this? I don't feel anything. Oh, it's stopping, I think. It's stopping? No. I don't think it's wet enough or something. Oh. Oh, whoops. Oh, Mike, Mike. Mike. Are, you gonna, are you actually going to drop? I think. You can see it. Woo! Awesome! Yeah. Our string was really wet. The white rope worked a lot better for a few reasons. One of the reasons is it's more tightly twined, and this makes it smoother, and that makes it easier for water to pass down the rope. As for shinging in Esparto's twine, it was twined and tied a lot looser, which made fibers hang off. Because of these fibers, the water had a difficult time traveling down this rope. What else could you do using string to transport water? Could you water the plants on your patio while you're inside your house? How about catching the rain and sending it somewhere useful, like your dog's water dish? Let us know what you come up with by sending your ideas to Zoom.
Welcome to Great Moments in Abu Dhabi History. You all know George Washington, father of our country and the first president of the United States. And you've probably all heard the stories about the cherry tree and how he couldn't tell a lie. Well, let's go back to 1742, to that great moment in Abu Dhabi history. Please join us again next time for another episode of Great Moments in Abu Dhabi History. <gasps> Got oodles of info in that noodle of yours? If you do, check out Zoom Noodle, an interactive trivia game on the Zoom website at pbskids.org or America Online, keyword PBS Kids. become the property of Zoom and will be eligible for inclusion in all Zoom media. This means that we can share your ideas with other Zoomers on TV, the web, in print material, and in other media. So, send us to Zoom. Here, Potter, try some fruit butter. Mmm, cherry. How did you learn how to make this, George Washington? I cannot tell why. I got the recipe from the Zoom website at pbskids.org. Oh. Hey, someone chopped down my cherry tree. Where did you get the cherries to make this, George Washington? <laughs> Funding for Zoom is provided by... The National Science Foundation. America's investment in the future. And by... The Corporation for Public Broadcasting. A private corporation funded by the American people. The Arthur Binding Davis Foundation. The Weezy Foundation. The Thompson Gosnell Family Foundation. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thanks.